In the Oya Empire, a long, long time ago, there lived a Bashuron, the chief warrior of the Oya Empire, and the second in command to the king. This particular Bashuron is called Tokumbo. He made his name as the greatest warrior of his time through hard work. He conquered many villages and empires as he led his army. He was known for being fierce in war and merciless. He fought with the Oyo Empire's greatest enemy and brought back home the head of their king and a lot of slaves. When he got back, the king, who was very impressed with him, crowned him the Bashuro and second in command. Being the Bashuro, he was entitled to half the kingdom, so he shared the kingdom among his brother and sons. The Bashuro was not just a great warrior, but had great juju. He had the greatest juju man serving him, so he was untouchable. People feared him even more when he was made the Bashuron. He had many armies than the king himself. As he wielded more power, so did his greed grow. Bashuron Tokumbo never forgives and never forgets. Few years back, before he became the great warrior he is now, he was a nobody. The current king was a prince then and had ordered the guards to beat up Tokumbo and disgrace him in the streets simply because he mistakenly poured water on him when he was trolling. Tokumbo never forgot this and planned to take revenge for the insult he received from the king. So now being the Bashuron, he started his plan to dispose of the king. Bashuron starts disrespecting the king, refusing to attend any of his meetings. The king grew furious, but his cabinet chief advised him to let Bashuron be, because he had strong juju and an army that outnumbers his own. People feared Bashuron, so he got away with anything. On the day of an important festival that was supposed to be held in the palace, Bashuron Tokumbo held a big feast in his house, celebrating himself and his sons. He had a very big family. 10 wives and over 20 children. He had three precious sons who were close to his heart and were following his footsteps to become warriors. His eldest son was named Aki. He was fearless like his father and a great warrior. The second son, Damilola, was more into traditional medicine and was playful and loves danger. The third son, Dayo, was a softy, but he was training to become a warrior. These three were the closest to Bashuron's heart. He was very wicked, but he loved his family. From the last war he won, he brought back a lot of slaves. There was one particular slave named Aisha. She was a queen, but now captured into the Oyo Empire, she is now a slave. She is very beautiful and so was easily noticed by Bashuron. Bashuron's son Aki wanted to take Aisha for himself. But his father already declared his interest and took Aisha to satisfy his needs, raping her even when she declined his request. Bashuron soon penetrated the king's cabinet, threatening to kill them if they did not dispose of the king. They found this very ridiculous, so some challenged him, but he killed them and used them to warn others. Because they were scared, they had to follow Bashuron's order and force the king to kill himself. The king couldn't stand it anymore, so he drank poison and died. Bashuron was so happy, he now had the ultimate power to choose a king for the kingdom. He chose a king himself. This time, the king answered to him. All the tributes that were supposed to go to the king went to Bashuron. He acquired more wealth and more women. His brothers, who were governors of different towns in Oyo, were feared by all. Tokumba's family was dreaded by all. Husbands hid their beautiful wives for fear that Bashuron might find them attractive and take them away. Bashuron's first wife, Lola, and other wives hated Aisha because their husband only slept with Aisha since she came. One wife even complained that when he was sleeping with her, he kept calling Aisha's name. Lola was very furious. So when Bashuron left the house, they carried Aisha to the middle of the compound and flogged her mercilessly. While they were flogging and laughing at her, 
Bashuron came back and saw them flogging his beloved Aisha. He ran to Aisha, slapped Lola who came crashing on the floor. He announced, none of you should ever touch Aisha ever again. She is no longer a slave. She is now my wife. I, Tokumbo, have said so and so shall it be. He said and walked away with Aisha. Lola was so shocked and was in pain from the slap she got from the Bashuron. Aisha, who was now in the room with Bashuron, who was treating her wound, asked him if he really meant what he said outside. Bashuron looked at her and shaked his head, saying, Do not think big of yourself. You are still a slave. I only announced you as my wife, so Bola and the others won't bully you. But Aisha was determined to be his wife. So she stood up and took off her clothes, saying, I am ready to give you my body and my heart willingly if you make me your wife. Lost in lust, Bashuron was lost in the beauty of her body. He was so aroused by the fact that she willingly gave him her heart and body. So he agreed to make her his wife as he pounced on her, sleeping with her that very night. Despite being the king's wife, Aisha was still bullied secretly by Lola, but this time she fought back. She now gained the power other wives had, so she didn't let them bully her like before. Dayo, one of Bashuron's youngest son, was in love with one of the daughter of the influential men in the empire. Her name is Abimbola, Bola for short. Dayo was in love with Bola and she felt the same way about him. Dayo would send her gifts and they would talk and laugh sharing good times together. Dayo planned on getting married to her after becoming a warrior. And finally, it was time for him to go to Dahomey to train to become a warrior. He was so sad to leave Bola, but he had to go. Before leaving, he showered Bola with gifts, promising to come back and marry her. While in the Oyo Empire, the king Bashuron appointed was now becoming greedy. He started disobeying Bashuron, thinking that he would get away with it. Ruthless Bashuron sent some men to hang him in the village square for everyone to see and as a warning to everyone not to challenge his authority. This was a big abomination. The people of Oyo were terrified and could only cry in their homes for the big abomination going on in their land. The next king in line was Adewale. He didn't want to become king. He was very scared because he knew how other kings who disobeyed Bashuron turned out. He was a man with pride and didn't want to be ordered around by the Bashuron. But after much pressure, he decided to become king. But first, he traveled far to the kingdom of Ahofia, known to have the strongest juju, and fortified himself with hefty charms. He didn't stop there, he also went to the Bini city and added more juju to protect himself and then returned to his hometown. Now he was ready, so he was crowned the king. Meanwhile, Bashuron's youngest brother Adeyemi was busy terrorizing the entire village, drinking and making out with women. Bashuron disliked Adeyemi because unlike his other brothers, Adeyemi was very lazy. He refused to walk and would drink and carry women all day. So when he became the Bashuron, he refused to assign any state to his brother. He stayed in the Oyo capital, making merry and wasting away. One day, Bola, Dayo's lover, was gisting and chatting with her friends when Adeyemi saw her. Because he wanted every girl for himself, he made advances at Bola. But Bola refused. So he tried to rape her. But Bola hit him in his manhood and ran away reporting to her father. Because her father was also influential in the village, he reported the issue to Bashuron. At this time, the whole village was already aware of what Adeyemi did and mocked him. Bashuron was so angry with Adeyemi and promised to punish him. But one of his advisors suggested that to remove the shame Adeyemi brought and to help him reduce his stupid behavior, Bola should be married to Adeyemi. Bashuron agreed and declared that Bola would marry Adeyemi. Bola was devastated. He loves Dayo, the Bashuron's son, but she couldn't refuse the order of the Bashuron 
because he was a deadly person. And it was just as Bashiron ordered. Bola got married to Adeyemi. Just before the wedding day, Dayo, who was away training to become a warrior in Dahomey, returned. He returned happily, hoping to reunite with his love, Bola. But he was greeted with the news of her wedding with his foolish uncle, Adeyemi. Dayo was broken. How could his uncle and father do this to him? He cried, but he couldn't help it. The day for the wedding came. The king was invited to the wedding and the entire village because two influential families were involved. Dayo was burning with hot seeing his lover get married to his uncle, but he endured, hating himself for going away. The wedding continued with a lot of drinking, dancing and entertainment. The king, Adewale, who was always looking for a chance to deal with the Bashuron, suggested that they present a sword fight as a form of entertainment. Bashuron agreed. The king offered that one of Bashuron's army fight his strongest army. Bashuron agreed, not knowing King Adewale's true intentions. Adewale decides which of Bashuron's army should fight. He calls out Dayo. But the Bashuron refused, sending his first son, Aki, who is very strong. But Dayo insisted on fighting. His brothers tried to stop him, but because he was angry that his lover was getting married to his uncle, he decided to fight. Unknown to him, the person he would be fighting against is a fierce giant his father captured in the last war. Everyone was shocked, but King Adewale was smiling because his plan was working. He wanted Bashiron's son to be killed. Dayo, who was scared, managed to start fighting. He fought the giants, but the giant was stronger than him. The giant cut all over his body with his sword. He threw Dayo to the ground, and just when he was about to finish him up, Dayo's brother, the second son of Bashiron, came in, stabbed the giant, and the giant stabbed him back, right into his heart. They both died. If you want to know what happened next, Watch out for part soon. See you in our next story. Bye.